Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome to Canard Boulevard. As you can tell, no flying in today's video. So I've got the plane apart to do some maintenance and upgrades and as happens every time you take an airplane apart, you find broken stuff and stuff that needs fixing and that is no exception to this time. So let me tell you what we're doing. First off, next to the cowling over there, you can see I have a strange shaped box, which is uh, suspiciously the same shape as the old propeller on here. So yes, that is a box from Cato Propellers that is containing the brand new propeller that will be replacing this 20 year old Cato propeller. This propeller has seen better days. Uh, it's had quite a few things go through it. And as happens with uh, pusher props, you can see actually up here, a bolt went through it one time. Whenever you kick up anything from the ground, if you the front wheel kicks up a stone or something, it comes up, goes through the prop, and you get a nick on the prop. And uh, the, you can dress those out. It is a wood core composite wrap prop. So when you do get a nick, as long as it's not into the wood core, you can dress it out you know, with epoxy. There's a whole procedure you go through to actually repair it. So that's been done to this prop many, many times. So it's still functional, it's still airworthy, but uh, it definitely doesn't look great. But more importantly is the pitch of this prop is a little bit more coarse than I would like. As a result, my static RPM on the ground is just a hair under 2300 RPM. And in the air at cruise speed, 2500, 2550. So that's the maximum RPM I can get out of this prop with this engine. The engine's a 180 horsepower engine, but that 180 horsepower is only when it is at max rated RPM, which is 2700 horsepower. So with this prop, I can never actually make the full rated horsepower out of this engine. The new prop is a slightly flatter pitch. It means that I will get more static RPM on the ground, higher RPM in cruise, both which means I'll get more power out of the engine. I might lose a knot or two on top speed, but it'll definitely improve takeoff run and initial climb performance. So that's going on. I'm also gonna be working on the heat. As you recall, a recent flight to Florida with my wife, uh, she was dissatisfied with the amount of heat that I had coming into the airplane. Before I worked on it, there was pretty much zero cabin heat coming into the airplane. I put a blower fan in there to suck more air from the engine, and it, it did blow some lukewarm air into the cabin, but when it was you know, significantly below freezing outside, it was a little chilly place to be, especially for her in the back seat. So how heat works on an airplane is you have the exhaust manifold pipe here that comes out. This is extremely hot. It glows red when it's at full power. And there's a shroud that covers this. Now I've taken the shroud off of this. You can see it in this picture here. The shroud draws air in around the pipe, which then heats it. And then it goes into this tube here and from there into the cabin. On this engine, the shroud here was actually intended for carb heat because for carbureted engines, you need the ability to pull heated air in case the temperature and dew point and moisture content of the air is such that you could encounter carburetor icing, which is a whole nother topic I'm not gonna try to explain in this video. In any case, so you do need to have a source of heated air in a carbureted engine. This is a fuel injected engine, as you can see, fuel injected spider, fuel injection lines, fuel injectors down here. So it doesn't need carb heat. So it was repurposed for cabin heat, but it, it really wasn't sufficient to heat the cabin. There's just not enough heat coming off of there. I'm going to put a different heat muff on here that is more designed to generate enough heat for the cabin. I took off the old one and there are standoffs that touch the pipe to keep the shroud from touching it. And I discovered where those standoffs are, are cracks. You can see cracks and actual holes in the pipe. That's extremely bad because this has exhaust in it, which has carbon monoxide. You do not want to have carbon monoxide coming out of here and then being sucked and blown into the cabin. That's very, very bad. That's the kind of thing that causes pilots to 
go to sleep and then crash their airplane and die. This pipe is coming off. I'm going to have a new one made that uh, obviously does not have these, these uh, cracks in it. I may just have maybe, I might be able to just have this cut off here and then redone, but we'll see. I'll talk to my welder and see what he thinks. That was something I wasn't expecting, so that's got to come off. I'm going to do that today. I also found a piece of baffling here that had crack, fractured, you know, stress fracture and cracks, so I've got to build a new piece of baffling there. As for heat, if we look underneath here, you can see there's a box right up in here that the tube goes to. And this is a kind of a box that is supposed to be so that you can have cold air coming in this side, hot air coming in this side, and then a valve that switches between the two so you can have either heat or ventilation. And as you can see, that valve has been permanently wired to the heat direction. So this really has no purpose. So the problem here is with the new heat shroud that will be going on here, you must have air coming through it at all times. If you don't have air moving through it, then it can actually melt because of the heat from the exhaust. When the heat is not turn, turned into the cabin, I need a way to actually still have that air moving through the shroud, through this pipe here, and then from here to somewhere else if it's not going into the cabin. Right now, the air intake for the heat was right about here. So it was just, there's almost no pressure left. So if you look at the engine and you see the baffling here, this is the high pressure area. Air comes in through this NACA vent at the bottom and it pressurizes the bottom part of the engine here. And then it blows up through the cylinders here and comes out the top here after blowing through these fins. And that's what keeps your cylinders cool. And then once it comes out of here, it blows out the back of the cowling. The problem for the heating system was that the air for the cabin intake was right about here. So by the time the air got back around here, there's almost no pressure left. And then it had to blow all the way back up and around and then there, and then all the way up to the front of the airplane. So there was almost no airflow, which is why I had to put that fan in there. Even with the fan, it wasn't doing much. So I'm gonna change that. So once I have a new heat muff on here, or heat shroud, and we need to have air moving through that at all times in order to keep it cool, this system isn't gonna do that. One of the other problems with having the air intake for the cabin here is that we are right next to these slip joints right here. These slip joints are the exhaust, and these pipes can actually move. As you can see, they're just on there loose. It's a slip joint, so it can just drop off there, and the only thing holding that in place is those two springs on either side. So if any gas leaks out through that slip joint, we now have carbon monoxide right here. We're literally right next to the slip joint, just two inches away from the air intake for the cabin. And if we have any exhaust leaking out through that slip joint, that means we're drawing carbon monoxide directly into the cabin. Not good. So I'm going to put a new piece of scat tubing. That's what this orange stuff is. Scat tubing down here near the, the NACA vent so that we get a blast of fresh air from outside coming up into the new heat muff. And then it will travel up the pipe and then the exit will be here. And that will then travel forward to a new valve. So this is going to come off. And the new valve will be one that switches to either this incoming air to either go in the cabin or come out the other side. And it will come out the other side and then come up here into the back of this baffle here. And then I'll put a hole and then the, it will come out the other side here. So basically we'll have air coming in the NACA vent on the bottom up to the heat muff where it gets heated down through this tube and then if it's not going into the cabin, instead it will just come out here and then get sucked out the back of the cowling. And that will keep the airflow moving to keep this whole shroud cool enough so it doesn't melt. And then if you do want it in the cabin, we'll pull a knob inside that will switch that valve. And instead of blowing the hot air out of here, it will instead blow it into the cabin. And with having a, 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 a scat tube down here in the blast air, it should pick up enough velocity that I could probably get rid of that fan entirely, which will be nice. Less complexity, less weight. The other thing that I'm going to do while I'm down here, so you can see I've also got a scat tube 
blast tube here that comes up and directs air directly up into the bottom of cylinder four. That was to correct a cooling problem with cylinder four. Mainly there's just so much stuff in here. We weren't getting enough airflow into cylinder four and it wasn't cooling properly. Well, now here's cylinder two, which is my hottest cylinder now. It used to be fine. Then I did a GAMI analysis and realized that the fuel flow for cylinder two was not balanced with the other three cylinders. It was getting too much fuel. One of the things that having extra fuel going to a cylinder does is help cool it. So this cylinder was running fine, nice temperatures like all the other three cylinders. However, I then put a smaller injector restrictor in here to change the amount of fuel the cylinder is getting to balance it with the other four. As soon as I did that, my fuel flow balance was perfect, my gammy spread was perfect. However, this cylinder went way hot. So it's now running 20, 30, sometimes even 40 degrees hotter than all of my other cylinders. And it is now my limiting factor in climbs. I have to reduce power because my cylinder two overheats. So I'm going to put a second blast tube that just comes up underneath and then ducts up to the fins of cylinder two, which, are, which is right there. So we'll have it come up and point at those fins and hopefully that will deal with the cylinder two cooling issues. So you can see I've got the uh, spinner off the prop. The next thing to do is to take the old prop off. While I'm at it, I'm gonna take this uh, extension off and the uh, starter wheel so that I can get to the alternator down here and change the alternator belt because uh, in order to change the alternator belt, all of this has to come off. I didn't do that when I put the new alternator on because I knew I had the new prop coming. So now that I have the new prop, I'll take that opportunity to take all of this stuff off and proactively put a replacement alternator belt on there. Another thing I'm doing is changing out the landing lights. You can see I've actually removed the old landing lights out of there. You can see it's now empty. There's a ADS-B in antenna. It normally lives in there as well, but it's, it's currently not there. So I have two new fly LEDs landing lights that will be going in there. And lastly, I've got an issue with the strut cover on the front nose gears. You can see I've got delamination and failure here. You can see I've actually got some, some cloth showing here and the, the cover itself is delaminated. You can see some foam in there. That's because this piece here, which is the cover, the aerodynamic cover that covers it up in flight when it's retracted up in here, doesn't bend the same as this strut. Now this strut is where all the strength for the no strut comes from. I've got to cut this off here and then uh, you know clean this up and then rebond it on because uh, I mean right now it looks like hell. We'll cut this off, wrap some new fiberglass on there and fix that up and, and make it look nice again. It's at the point where I'm almost worried that this might come off in a landing and if it were to come off and then go through my brand new, very expensive propeller, I would be less pleased than you can imagine. Also, I have a new nose gear fork on order. This one's cast. We have new machined ones coming, so this is all gonna go away, and I've got a new one that we'll put on here. These cast nose wheel forks, they can fail if you ever encounter nose wheel shimmy. Replacing that with a brand new machined one is much, much stronger and should look better. I've still got some grease leaking out of this seal here. I may have to replace the, these bearing seals in here just because I've cleaned that several times and it's still coming out. So that's, that's another item on the to-do list. You'll never have a dull moment with airplanes. Uh, if you take things apart, you will always find broken things and you will need to spend some time fixing them. So none of this is entirely unexpected. Uh, this was the, the cracks in the exhaust pipe was alarming and unexpected. However, it's not anything that's uh, insurmountable, so we'll deal with it. So as you can tell, airplane is down for the foreseeable future until I get this work finished. I'm going to get started today, but uh, you won't see any more flying videos for a few weeks until I get all this work completed. Hope this was of some interest to some of you. If you like this kind of video, hey, let me know in the comment section below. Click like, subscribe. I really appreciate when you guys subscribe to the channel. Uh, not only do you get notified when I post a new video, but it really helps me out in growing the channel. So please, if you could take 10 seconds, just subscribe to the channel and like this video. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.